welcome to another painting video. In this video, I'll be painting two of the Geller Pox Infected, which I'll be using as an alternative to my Chaos Spawn in my Death Guard army. Both of these models are full of character and I wanted to take this opportunity to paint two completely different models color-wise while still keeping them grounded in the same army. Let's begin, shall we? I first spray the model with Dark Plum. This is a Pro Acryl paint from the signature set of Ninjan, which I was looking forward to try out. I then Zenithal Rekarth Flesh over the model. I can already see this dead skin color works very well with the undercoat. To brighten the skin a little bit, I spray Palace Witch Flesh on the topmost parts of the model. I spray a mix of Drakenhof Nightshade and Lamia Medium on the model. Spraying a wash gives a slightly different effect than painting it on with a brush. The tentacles I sprayed with Dark Magenta, which is also from the same signature set as the Dark Plum. The Pro Acryl paints are really bright and they flow nicely out of the airbrush. Although I tried to cover as much as I could on the model, uh, there's some overspray on the body, but this is no problem at all. With mutation, it's always fun to try and blend the mutation with the main skin. I paint the raised areas of the skin with Wolfen Grey. Spraying the skin with Palace Witch Flesh gave me a little issue because the skin was already very bright. Luckily the Drakenhof Nightshade Wash darkened it just a little bit. I add Reikland Flesh Shade to all the crevices of the skin. This will give the dead skin a little bit more life. I feather on a mix of Ulthen Grey and Palace Witch Flesh on the raised areas of the skin. I also take this opportunity to fix any harsh lines the wash might have left behind. I stipple on Palace Witch Flesh to brighten the skin in certain places. All the rough stitched up skin is shaded with Targor Raid Shade. This will make the skin look bruised, which is, you know, very likely to happen if you get stitched up this way, right? To make the skin look more infected, I shade on Berserker Bloodshade. Both of these subtle washes are great. I use them a lot and I can definitely recommend them. I like the juxtaposition of the colorless dead skin and the super bright tentacles. They are a little flat though, so let's add some depth to them. I highlight the tentacles in three steps. First with Emperor's Children. Basically highlight the suckers, the rims and parts that will catch the light. If you hold your model underneath your painting lamp, you will easily see where those places are. I add a highlight of Fulgrim Pink and end with a highlight of Fulgrim Pink mixed with some Palace Witch Flesh. Now the tentacles look way too clean for my taste. To gross them up, I paint them with a mixture of Gulliman Flesh and Plague Bear Flesh. I dilute this mix with a lot of Lamia Medium. This way the mixture will just tint the tentacles. I also add this mix to the wormy tentacles that come out of his mouth. Because they are very bright, it looks really gross in just one simple step. Now while the tentacles still look very bright, they do fit the model itself. Let's do a quick rundown on some of the details. I also use these on the second infected model. Horns are base coated with Incubi Darkness and cloth with dryad bark. This gives them a nice bleak leather look. Horns are highlighted with Pharisian Grey. 
and the cloth is highlighted with Baneblade Brown. Pustules are painted with Iandan Yellow. And I add some Plague Bear Flesh to gross them up even more. I highlight the pustules with Usapti Bone. Maggots are base coated with Palace Witch Flesh. I also pick out all the weird eyes on the tentacle arm. I shade with Reikland Flesh Shade. And I shade again with Ethonian Camo Shade. The fish hanging from his belt is painted with Athermatic Blue. And the barnacles on his back and the fish get a diluted coat of Achillean Green to add a little bit more sea green to this nautical monster. In this video I am highlighting the standout stuff I am painting. I might actually do this in future videos where stuff like metal etc I'll probably skip unless it's a completely new method. What do you guys think? Should I focus more on the standout stuff or do a complete recipe in these types of videos? Let's give the second infected a different but still gross look. I first spray the entire model with Sword Hilt Burgundy. This is a warmer undercoat than the previous model. I Zenithal Kislev Flesh on the model. My intention for this model was to go a little bit more fleshy, but that changed just a little bit, and I'll show you that in a second. I brighten the skin with some short bursts of Flayed One Flesh. And then for some shading, I added a mix of Athonian Camo Shade and Lamia Medium. This tinted the model in a more greenish hue, but I really liked it, so I went with that direction instead of starting over. His mutations are sprayed with Dark Sea Ben, which is another Pro Acryl paint from the signature series of Ben Comets. Comets? I don't know. The green hue on the skin really complements the deep green of the mutations. It's fun to play with colors this way. While the previous model was very contradictory, this model is more complementary with its colors. For the skin, I wanted to do something special. With Creek Khaki, I'm following the curvatures of the muscles and I draw small lines, basically creating a sinewy texture on the skin. I enhance these lines with a mix of Creek Khaki and Dorn Yellow. And finally add some small lines and dots of Dorn Yellow to brighten the highlights. Now this is a lot of work, but as I was only painting this model this way, it's worth the extra effort in my opinion. The skin where the mutations are and wounds are coated with a very watered down Karoburk Crimson. Usually I use Lamia Medium to water down washes and contrast paints. And I enhance the effect with a watered down Druki Violet. I also let it flow a little bit in the recesses of the skin, which gives the skin a little bit more life. I really like how this model is turning out. As with the previous model, his mutations are a little bit flat with only one color, so let's fix that. I highlight both the claw and the fly uh, arm with Stegodon Scale Green. I apply a rough feathering motion to highlight. I repeat the process with Thunderhawk Blue. And again with Pharisian Gray. And I end with a small highlight of Blue Horror to really make the mutations pop. Of course this looks way too clean, so I wash the mutations with a mix of Plague Bearer Flesh and Lamia Medium. Just enough to tint and not completely cover the previous work. <laughs> 
It's always fun to paint guts. I first base coat with Screamer Pink. And apply a layer of Kislev Flesh, making sure the previous layer is still in the recesses. I highlight the guts with Flayed One Flesh. And again with Palace Witch Flesh. Then I paint the guts with a mix of Lamia Medium and a little bit of Volipus Pink. This will shade the guts in a more pinkish hue. Boils on this model I paint with Plague Bear Flesh. And then with a diluted Blood Angel Red. I use a wet brush to wipe away any excess. They don't need to be bright red, I just want to tint the pustules a little bit. This will make them look a little bit more infected. As you can see, I also painted the inside of the claw to make it look more gross. The bright guts and gore really complement the drab model, adding more colorful spot colors. Painting guts is fun. For the final step on both models, I add oozing vomit from the army painter where I want to gross things up. It's a lovely chunky paint and you can wipe it away if it's too thick in places. It really adds to that slime effect. For blood I'm using dry blood which is also from the army painter. A nice dark blood, just apply with an old brush. And here we have two Geller Pox Infected which will be great chaos spawn in my army. I do really like the Chaos Spawn as they are quite tough and super annoying for your opponent. I always make sure to take at least one unit of these buggers. It was fun trying to paint them in two completely different ways, but because of the base they still look to be in the same army. In my next video I am going to finally do a sequel to my blood effects review video. I got a whole batch of new blood paints to try and I think, well at least hope, we have some winners this time. In the meantime, be sure to check out my Instagram where I'll post pictures of current projects and behind the scenes stuff. But for now, thanks for watching.